Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast NFL edition. You heard me NFL edition. We are back. The NFL is starting literally one week from now as we are recording next Thursday. We're going to have the Thursday night game. So with the NFL coming back, we got our NFL specials. We got the producer with us, Mr. Justin Ackendale. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. It is September and everyone knows in America what september means football season it's back man this summer flew it flew like i felt like we were just watching the super bowl and here we are the days just run together for me i don't i don't pay attention to that I just <laughs> put one foot in front of the other and i just keep going i don't i don't know how shit how fast we, these days be going i just get through them that's what i do <laughs> fair enough we were we recorded after the draft, we were doing after the season previews schedules, and we were talking about what teams, how we think we're going to fare out the top games. Now it's time for real. Uh, you did an excellent job. We're going to be talking about who's going to be winning each division, get into who's going to make the playoffs. There's a lot of good stuff we're going to be talking about, but let's get the serious stuff out of the way. Number one news story in the NFL the past two years, Deshaun Watson, that saga is concluded. Uh, he's now suspended 11 games. This year, a $5 million fine. First, it was six. NFL refuted. Now, 11. Justin, now that it apparently now is done, what are your whole thoughts on this situation now? Man, it's just, it's just insane that the Browns decided to fully guarantee his contract before, like, any of, like, before any of the women, like, started talking to the league, before the, investigation was done like it's just crazy man like the dude basically got rewarded for um getting into some bullshit and then um the six games come out and then everyone felt like that was the arbiter the independent arbiter lady um she um gave him six games off the fact that like the nfl's never like did a punishment like this before and like for for this crime which i kind of get and then the nfl stepped in and it was like nah we publicity about to be too bad if you only get six and then Goodell gave him 11 so it's just a little like funny it's just like why didn't y'all just like have Goodell just rule on it to begin with and um not um have an arbiter you know but it's crazy he's gonna be back forget what week but he's gonna start off against the Texans I don't know how good good he's gonna be playing shit if the Browns aren't any good I wouldn't even play him this year honestly there's really no point if they're not in like playoff contention or like competitive really so the reason with the first judge was because the players union wanted to take some power away from goodell so they wanted those decisions to go to the judge that judge sue roberts i believe is her name and then when that when she makes decisions the nfl can be like all right if public likes it we're cool with it if we're going to get public backlash we got to go against it. And they may agree, but, you know, public backlash. So in that way, NFL, like I always say, evil geniuses, they win either way because they look like heroes because they're like, oh, no, six mm -hmm. is too light. So we got it. So they look like heroes in that regard, showing that they care or whatnot. But you and I both know it's about protecting the shield. And, yeah, the stuff that Deshaun Watson was accused of, very creepy, terrible stuff. But if we're just, just going to be. It's weird, very weird, but we're going to just be blunt. The reason the NFL is really coming after his ass is because the owners were all pissed at the Browns. Let's just, it is what it is. It's the truth. Well, 100%. Like, if, if fucking um, Cleveland doesn't give him that contract, he's, he gets six games and he's back um, for yep. the Monday night game and gets on um, the Bengals. Like, mm -hmm. for sure. Like, that's 100% that's fact. But they went in the public eye. Either way, Goodell looks like, oh, he's not that bad. And NFL just wins again in some crazy way. Now, a team that you and I are both high on, the Bills, they went the whole opposite way. It just came out that their punter, Matt Ariza, was accused of gang rape. And they didn't even wait for hearings or any of that. They just released his ass. They were not dealing with that. What did you think of this situation because now 
NFL doesn't like bad press. And this is two like sexual things back to back with Watson and this guy. Yeah, they just meant they made the Bills made a good decision on that part and just didn't even deal with any of the backlash they were about to get. So yeah, mm-hmm. that was a good decision by them. That's crazy that he got caught up in some crazy shit like that, though. That's insane. Yeah, and they're gonna have the hearings and all that. And again, innocent until proven guilty, but NFL is a private organization. They don't have to wait for the legal stuff. They're going to be like, you said, we're not dealing with your ass. We don't want that bad press. You're out of here. No, and then if he ends up being innocent, like, he's a punter. He'll get another job. Yeah, he'll get another job. Or he might not get get another job. I don't know. But, like, he's a punter, so no one's going to be, like, going out their way to cover this shit throughout the courts. Yeah. It's not like like it's a star or, like, a high-profile rookie or something. He's a punter. Yeah. His family did say that his son, their son's getting judged by the media and he's guilty before proven innocent and cancel culture and all of that. And to some degree, I mean, until he's fully guilty, I get what they're saying. Yeah, they should just be glad that he's not black. That is well, that is true because it wouldn't even I don't even know if they would have gotten into this article about those situations, but we'll see because gang rape of a 17 year old that ain't that, that's bad. That's bad. That's some bad that's some that's some bad shit to be associated with, did it or not. Like that's just not moving correctly. No, it is it is not, it is not. Last one before we get into the real meeting of this podcast, the games. John Gruden came out of the woodwork saying that he knows his emails are wrong, but wants another shot. Justin, would you give John Gruden another shot? And do you think he's going to get another shot? Do I think he'll get another shot? Yes. Will Justin Ackendale personally give him another shot? No. Fuck that. Like. What? I know your true colors at this point. Why would I want you around me if I'm a player or I'm the owner of the team? Like, nah, I'm like, I know you're racist. Like, nah, fuck that now. Nah. John Green, stay at home. You got the Raiders end up paying though. I know he was trying to sue to get his money. But... Oh, no, he's still suing him. He, he's going to win that case. The NFL is going to settle. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so he's going to get his money still. Just, you know, just stay away. Shit. Use you, you chill for five years, it could blow over, and then you could probably, I don't know, go to college or something. But nah, not on my team. Nope, yeah, because with this case, which we'll probably be reporting on it because I think it'll be done in the next couple months. The reason I say he's gonna win is John Gruden wasn't emailing himself, somebody these people are emailing back, and his attorney's gonna be like, All right, let's just let's do discovery, let's open up what the yeah. other people were saying. Yep, and as soon as that becomes a conversation, they're gonna be like, eh. Yeah, we'll probably chill out. Yeah, exactly. Because, who? yeah, <laughs> those other owners, if that stuff comes out, it ain't, it ain't going to be looking pretty for them. So I know. Man, I would love to see what some of these owners, coaches be saying to each other, though. That would be, whew, that would be some primetime TV. I'll tell you what, that would be crazy. Yeah, because whoever he was emailing, I know they have been quiet. They have been oh, yeah. quiet. But we'll definitely, that's going to happen in these couple months. He'll settle, get all his money, and then, like you said, show for a couple years. And NFL don't care. If you can win games, you're going to get a job back. Exactly. He wasn't necessarily winning with um, Vegas before he got fired. I mean, they may have run after they axed him. So, But Justin, man, let's get into it. Season starts next week. We're going to be going over divisions. You got who you think is going to win the divisions. Uh, runners up playoffs let's just go right into it man let's start which is a big super bowl favorite and they're gonna be playing next thursday afc east Who you they got? are the super super bowl favorites mm. they are the super bowl favorites going the year they got the best odds with plus 600 win total 11 and a half the win the over under for um wins this season is 11 and a half i got the afc east winner that's the buffalo bills Josh Allen, those boys are going to do it. Some notable games that they got this year. They start off next Thursday against the Rams. A couple weeks after that, they um, go to Baltimore. Then and then two weeks after that, they go to Kansas City. Week 8, they got the Packers. Week 10, they got the Vikings. And then um, 
the week before the last week, they go to Cincinnati in December. I think they're going to dominate the AFC East, to be quite honest. The only real competition in the division is Miami. I mean, the Jets aren't really worth talking about on this podcast, and I'm not going to do it. And then um, the Patriots, they don't have an offensive cor- coordinator at the moment. Are so. you believing the stuff from camp that the offense just looks terrible? I do believe that. Um, I don't think those reporters would be lying about that. I don't know. But, yeah, I, I expect Josh Allen to pick up where he left off in the playoffs before um they lost to Kansas City in the um in that overtime game in the um, divisional round. But, yeah, Buffalo's going, Buffalo's going to be good. And because I'm looking, you have the notable games, too, but just basing it off of last year, I mean, their first – First eight games are all playoff teams in a sense. Miami was a 10 9 win team, I believe, last year. And you said, like, they and Pittsburgh, we don't know what's going to happen at quarterback, but they they do start that's, off pretty that's tough. Still a, that's still a tough team. Like, the Steelers, like, that's going to be a tough out for anyone, regardless of who's playing quarterback. Yeah, the first first eight weeks are a little rough. They got to go, they got to go to the Rams, then go to, um, then go to um, Tennessee, and then week three at Miami. That's going to be a big test for Miami, and then also Buffalo because that's going to be it's going to be hot. It's still September in uh, Miami, so that's going to be a little hot for them. They get the bye in week seven after um, and the three games before the bye are Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Kansas City. Got the get the bye week, and then it gets significantly easier down the stretch. So, yeah, I, I like the Bills to to end up um, to be close, top two, top one seed. In the AFC, like, I don't see why not. Is it? I think it's time for them to win just from the standpoint oh, yeah. of one of your notes. I mean, once the quarterback gets all that money kicking in, your window's almost closed nowadays. Yeah, he already signed. He signed the contract last year, I think. And then, like, the the big, like, pay increase starts next year. That's when he's going to be making, like, close to $50 million a year. So, yeah, like this is the one. No, this is the opportunity. I think they all know that internally in Buffalo. They signed Von Miller this year. He was a big pickup for the Rams last year, who ended up winning the Super Bowl. I really, I really like the um, Buffalo Bills. Their defense is top five in the NFL. Their secondary is really good. I think the Bills are going to be a tough team in the AFC, like one of the best in the AFC. Okay, okay. So you got the Bills winning the AFC East, so that is one playoff spot down in the AFC. You had the runner-ups in the AFC East, the Miami Dolphins. You touched on them. There's a lot of hype with them. What are you thinking? Yeah, there there is a lot of hype with Miami. The, the shit. The only real question mark is Tua. Can Tua, you know, get the ball to these playmakers that they just got? They got Tyreek Hill now. They got um. Oh, who's our receiver? Jalen Wallow, um, second year kid out of Alabama. Got the new coach, Mike McDaniels. He was the um old OC at the 49ers last year. So he's gonna bring in that Shanahan system, that system that keeps winning Super Bowls at this point, the last two teams. And that's that that Shanahan McVeigh, you know, zone system that, you know, has been winning the Super Bowls the past couple of years. So yeah, I think Miami's gonna look look real good. They still got a good defense. The only question marks really are two on their offensive line. Does Miami make the playoffs? <sighs> we will see. I mean, they're they're. I would say yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually going to say yeah because um, I mean, we're going to get to the AFC West, but the AFC West is so stacked, and they're going to just beat beat up on each other. Like, I don't I don't know if they're going to be able to get three teams from that division into the playoffs. So. Yeah, I think Miami can end up coming out. All right, so we got Bills in Miami so far. Now let's go. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we put in the men. We're, we're, we're not putting the men on this, but because we still got to get to the north now. But so you have yeah, them on my, the my, cusp. I, they're on the cusp. They're on the cusp. Okay, so Miami's on the cusp. Bills are definitely in. Yeah, the Bills are in one thousand percent. All right, let's go to the AFC North, <laughs> which you got the Bengals, the Ravens, the Steelers, and I. And the Browns, but you have before you get before we get going. I I know that AFC West got the quarterbacks. They got all the best quarterbacks, which is why people are saying they're the best division in football. But we can't sleep on the AFC North. Like there are hitters in the AFC North as well. 
just wanted to put, make say that. I mean, I'll go further too. The AFC North, to me, right now, have two more proven young quarterbacks than the AFC West. Everyone's on the Herbert train, and I fully understand it. But Joe Burrow was in the Super Bowl. Yes, he was. Lamar Jackson behind that MVP. shitty ass. Yes, he is. Whew, playing with no contract too. <laughs> So well, not, I'm just not saying, no contract, no extension. No yeah. extension. So I'm just saying, like, everyone's on this Herbert train. And I get it. He's hard. But Burrow is in the Super Bowl, like you said, no line. Before Lamar Jackson got hurt, they were the number one team in the AFC with no players. Yeah, with no players. Yeah. And to go into that, that's why I got Baltimore winning the – I got Baltimore winning the AFC North. They're bringing back a lot of guys. I know they're, I know they're going to get back J.K. Dobbins, a, he- a healthy – Lamar Jackson, who is who still is not under contract long term. So like I know it's really disrespectful, but I think he's gonna like play with like something to prove. The only thing that really has me um worried about the um Ravens is they didn't really address the, the fact that they don't have any wide receivers. They traded Marquise Brown to the Cardinals um during the draft. So that's a that's a small concern for them, but other than that, I mean they got a, they got a fucking easy ass schedule compared to the Bengals. So yeah, I think they're going to end up um taking the division. All right, Ravens taking the division. That means they be in the playoffs. Do you agree with Lamar representing himself? Hell no, he should have an agent. <laughs> he agree. should not be representing himself. He he should have an agent negotiating that contract. But hey, do you man? You might. He might be able to, um, you know, start a new wave and wave and um, other players might start representing themselves. But it's it's not a smart idea. He'll, he would be signed by now if he um, had an agent. And then you have the second place team here, the Cincinnati Bengals, who just came off of an improbable Super Bowl run and was one Aaron Donald tackle away from potentially winning the Super Bowl. You got them in second place. I do. I do. Now, the, the AFC North is really is really tricky for me because if the Bengals can like, you know, take the next step and be and be one of those teams that are like you know that we think of like the Packers, the Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, those type of teams like they can very well win this division, but their their schedule is a lot harder than um the Ravens. So I think, like for example. There at the end of the season, the um the Bengals have to play have to go to Tampa. Baltimore don't gotta do that. So just just little things like that. They have they have to play the um like the Ravens gotta play the Bills. Yeah, the Ravens don't gotta play the Bills. Cincinnati does. Like it's just little things like that. That's why that's why I can't right now put the Bengals in first place, but that is very well subject to change. They come out just guns a blazing and doing the same shit that they were doing in the playoffs. Do the Bengals make the playoffs? Yes, I have them in as a um, wild card in this little shindig right now. Okay, so the Bengals are a wild card. So we got the yeah. Bills, Ravens, and Bengals in. I agree with your AFC North thing. I will say my only sprinkle, since we already know Browns are done, unless Jacoby Brissett really manages the game. But you, a team you talked about, Pittsburgh's going to ruin some people's seasons. Pittsburgh is a tough out for anyone. Like when I was writing the notes, like anytime I saw one of a, a good team play in Pittsburgh, I put that as a notable game because that is a notable fucking game because that shit is like that they, they can win. Like they can beat anyone. They got into they the playoffs anyone, last year. Yes, with fucking Big Ben who could not throw. Mm-hmm. Enough said. That Mike Tomlin to this day still. No losing seasons as an NFL coach. Like that, right now. like that man don't that man don't fuck around. Like, yeah, I I respect the Steelers so much. I hate them, but I, I respect that team. That defense is incredible. Like the defense is incredible. I don't think they're gonna fall back any and their offense, like you can't sleep on their offense either. They don't have an offensive line, which is probably gonna hold them back, but their their weapons are as good as anyone in the league. Mm-hmm. Were you surprised the Browns didn't try and get Jimmy Garoppolo? I think you put Jimmy on this roster, you're you're in the playoffs. 
Yeah, I think the only reason why the Browns didn't try to get another quarterback is they did guarantee all of um, Deshaun's money, and they're also still playing Baker Mayfield. That's, so that's they're, true. they're already paying Baker Mayfield to not be there. See, if they did Baker Mayfield so dirty, oh, my God, they would have kept this man under contract, kept him with Deshaun's and shit. They'll still be live because Baker played most of that season hurt. Like, yes, he did. Like, I, I'm not a big Baker Mayfield guy, but the man proved like he he doesn't suck. So like, they didn't have they didn't have to do him so dirty like that. They they really didn't. But I mean, Baker Mayfield's the only quarterback who's won a playoff game for the Browns in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah, and I'm almost thirty. Yeah. So, I mean. I'm not going to act like his team wasn't hard or nothing, but yeah, I mean, they almost beat the Chiefs that year. Like I remember that game so vividly. They they were um, touchback away because yep. um, Gard Higgins fumbled that ball going in going in the score over the back of the end zone for a touchback. If they um, get that play, the Browns will have been in the AFC Championship game. And that's how crazy the NFL is. One like if that everything changes. They would have re-signed Baker that day. Yeah, like Baker would have got. Baker would have been a two hundred million dollar man at this point. All right, all right. Now you're down to your the division everyone is talking about, AFC West. First place, you got the Chargers. I do. I've I've sipped all of the Kool Aid that all these motherfuckers have been talking about. I am I am in. I am in. On the Los Angeles San Diego Chargers. I still like calling them San Diego. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> but this is gonna be a theme of the podcast. They got the easiest division, they got the easiest schedule in the um in one of the best divisions in football. And I think they arguably got the best roster in the division. Now look at their schedule now. Yeah, I mean, start week one off against the Raiders. Go to, go to the Chiefs. Week two, week five at the Browns. And, I, oh, and Deshaun's not going to be in that game. But I only made that um game a knowable game because that game was crazy last year. It was like forty nine to forty two. Baker and um Herbert were going crazy. And the Chargers did not make the playoffs based off the fact that they could not stop the run. And Cleveland likes to run run the ball, so that's going to be a big test for them. Week five, can they? Stop the run, because that's literally why. I mean, Josh Jacobs in that game went off on the um in the week eighteen game to go to the um go to the playoffs. The Chargers also last year, like they lost one, they lost three of the last four games of the season last year, mm-hmm. and one of those games were uh, upset to the Texans, where Re- where Rex Burkhead went off for one hundred forty seven yards and two touchdowns, like just stupid. So if they can um. If they can fortify they, their run defense, oh, my God, the Scots live with them. They traded for Khalil Mack. They signed J.C. Jackson from the Patriots. Herbert's still going to be there. They still got Austin Eckler. Hopefully, Brandon Staley gets a little bit more conservative. I don't want him to lose his edge completely, but just not go for as many fourth downs as you did. And I think the Chargers could potentially get the number one seed. Ah, wait, wait. That's that's too much of a hot take. Their division's too good. They're going to lose in the division. But, yeah, I think they're going to win it. Yeah, because I'm looking at their last four because you brought up how they lost a couple of their last four. Titans, Colts, Rams, Broncos. Yeah, that's a that's a tough stretch. But yes. I, think, I think the Chargers can do it, especially if Josh is um, – Justin Herbert takes another leap too. I mean, watch out. Herbert win MVP this year? I got him top three to win MVP. I, I, I know it's going to be a quarterback from the AFC, though. Okay, okay. And then second place, you have the team who has went to the AFC Championship four straight years, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, they have the hardest the, um, schedule in the division. They traded Tyreek Hill. I think I think the Chiefs and Andy Reid and Patrick Holmes are good enough that it's not really going to matter. I think that um, Marquez Valdez Stantling can um take the top of the defense. They got fake news. Um, Tyreek Hill, Cole Hardman still on the roster. They picked up Juju from the Steelers. I I think they got enough receiver wise. They still got Kelsey. Their line their line's still good. Like I still think the Chiefs are going to put up a whole lot of points. And yeah, I think I think they're going to take second place. Pencilman for the playoffs. Both of them. 
what Bobby, Chargers and uh, yeah, what well, Chargers yeah, are Chargers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Kansas City ends up getting to the playoffs, even though their, their schedule is tough. Their schedule is a bitch. But then you have the other two teams in that. What about them? Broncos, Raiders. Who I'm? I'm more high on the Raiders. Cause I mean, someone, someone got to come in fourth place. I mean, shit. You're right. I don't think it's going. I think it's going to be Denver personally because you know, and they just gave Russell Wilson like two hundred fifty million or something stupid today. Nope, but, still um, less guaranteed than Deshaun Watson. <laughs> That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be um the Raiders third place and then um Broncos um in fourth place just because um just got to get used to Russell Wilson but yeah, I mean all these teams all subject to change. They're all going to beat the hell out of each other like I I'm not sure about the AFC West to be quite honest. Like anyone could really win the division, but I think the Chargers have the best roster and the Chiefs have the most have the best pedigree. So that's why I got them at the top two. Fair enough. Fair enough. Then you got the weakest division in the AFC. You see how you make, you see how you make really notes for real. Like I don't, I don't even feel like talking about these things. Yeah, it's <laughs> you have the you have the Colts. Is that because of Ryan, Matt Ryan coming to town? Yeah, Matt Ryan. They got they got the best roster in that division. Tennessee lost AJ Brown. Derrick Henry's coming off injury. Tannehill ain't it. I don't think he's going to end up finishing the season. Like Tennessee just Tennessee is just so fake news to me. And I hate them. And I, I didn't even make. I didn't even like. I'm fading them. Tennessee so bad. I think Jacksonville going um be second place in that division. I think Trevor Lawrence with a actual NFL coach will be night and day difference. Night and day. Because Urban Meyer just wasn't it for some reason. I don't know why. I think he just didn't give a fuck about that job. But, yeah, Doug Peterson's going to do a way better job than um, Urban Meyer getting the, getting the Jaguars at least looking competent because they weren't even competent under Urban Meyer. Okay, okay. I mean, Tennessee Titans, that's crazy. We just, Well, this is the NFL. They go from the number one overall seat to not in at all, not even being – considered so they might fuck they might fuck around and come in last place man davis mills ain't ain't no ain't that bad either. <laughs> no 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 davis mills. no they, no no don't ever disrespect king henry like that oh hell no nah. they ain't gonna be last di- the texans i'm disrespecting Tannehill, not king henry you know i respect that man that man has made me look like a goddamn Full until, up until last year when he got the hurt, but nah. Texans, nah, they're they're gonna be trash. The only thing the Texans did is when those ladies started when they filed lawsuits against them, they settled theirs within two hours, all thirty two hours. Watson took like two years. They, they did in third in two hours. Yeah, the Texans weren't fucking around. So I, nah, man, they they're gonna come in last place and they're gonna be looking to get Bryce Young next year. Hey, that would be that would be good for them. You yeah, actually off topic. You think you think um the top two quarterbacks in college football will come out next year? I definitely think Bryce will. I think um I do think CJ will as well. I think you don't the think CJ Mike you don't think CJ might come back for another year? No, I I don't think so because I think he'll be leaving with Jackson. Even though I think Jackson Smith and Jimbo might, depending on what team is up there, he might get drafted before CJ. If they already have the quarterback, let's say Jacksonville gets last, they're going to draft Jackson Smith and Jigbo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think if OSU doesn't have the season that they want to, I can see CJ coming back. It's, it's because... Um, I only pose that question because I don't know how much their nil their nil deals are worth. So like, I feel like that will like leave some of these players like still in college a little longer because like they still get money like in college. So like, what's the rush to go to the NFL? You know what I'm saying? If they that's get, a good if, they, if they're one, no, yeah, that's... if they're one like the player. That's a very good point, man. Very good point. I know I've talked about it on our college stuff with Byron. Just today, C.J. Stroud bought every person on the Ohio State team a new freaking suit for Saturday. 500 bucks a piece. 
Yeah, that's love right there, man. I mean, if you are the quarterback getting what five million nil mm-hmm. and your fucking offensive linemen are only getting fucking Bobby Layman Chevrolet in Columbus, like to do their commercials for a hundred fifty bucks, it's your fucking obligation to fucking <laughs> put those guys up. Bobby, You're obligated. Bobby Layman, and you know. And we got to keep it a buck, too. I know we talked about this on our name, image, and likeness podcast that we did with the others. A lot of these people ain't getting name, image, and likeness, too. Yes. Fact. Fucking fact. A lot like the overwhelming majority of these college players are still not fucking getting a dime. That's why, shit. All right. I already told you about this after I saw that um, that real sports about um, Kevin Warren. I think the conferences need to start paying these kids. I think it needs to come down to the conferences. I don't think the school's ever going to do it, but it's the it's the conferences who are getting all the, or well, the school is too, but the conferences is what is brokering these deals. I think the Big Ten, the SEC, these fucking super goddamn conferences need to start paying their football and basketball teams. Like if the schools ain't going to do it, I feel like the um, I feel like the conferences are obligated because like essentially what they did is. They outsourced paying them the fucking boosters. That's that's all they did. They outsourced it to boosters. And for any, because we don't want to get too about it, but anyone who wants to listen to more name and like this stuff, make sure you listen to our podcast on that. We had Sarah, uh, Chelsea, Byron, and myself talking about that. So definitely check that out. I'll just answer real quick. The schools will never pay them because then the schools pay them. They're employees of the school, which means they have to give them benefits. They are not paying for health insurance. They will not do that. That is dead. That will never happen. That is why the school will never pay them. Conference? Maybe. I just, like I said on that podcast, they all better figure it out because now they're going to the federal government and you thought the NCAA is bad? Wait till you try to ask the federal government to make your laws for you. Then you'll really see hell. Yeah. Totally agree. So, but that's a good point on the quarterbacks, though. I didn't, I haven't thought about that this early in the year just we got to see who's going to be in last place and if you want to go there all right so before we go to the <laughs> nfc so afc there's let me see there's eight spots seven spots one two three four five, five six seven spots all right so we have bills ravens chargers kansas Bengals. so one two three four five we have five teams in right now you get two more spots. Who's going in? I got Buffalo number one seat. Okay. We will give the Ravens the two seat. Mm-hmm. We're going to give the Chargers the third seed. Okay. Four seeds the Colts by... God damn it. Oh, I forgot. I, I, I didn't even write them down. Division. Yeah, no, like four seeds gonna be the Colts. Okay. I got I got the Bengals taking up a spot. Yep. So you got so, Bengals fifth or Yeah, I got Bengals fifth. Okay. I got I got KC as my sixth seed. So you have one spot. I got one spot. So it's pretty much between Steelers. We got the Steelers. We get Browns won't be in it. We got Miami. Mm-hmm. We got the Patriots, even though I think they're going to be trash. Let's not even include them. We got Denver. Mm-hmm. Got the Broncos. Did I already say the Raiders? Did I say Raiders? No, you have not said the Raiders. And I got the Raiders. Yeah, those are the team. Yeah, those are the teams for me. <sighs> I think I gotta go. Um, I think I'm gonna pick the Broncos. I think, do, I think I'm going to pick the Broncos. Yeah. I think the AFC West gets um, three teams in. And the Raiders with Devontae Adams, all of them outside looking in on this one. I like Russell Wilson more than Derek Carr. What can I say? I uh, forgot nope. about Devontae Adams. That nigga is powerful. Yeah, Woo! I mean, they made the playoffs without Devontae in a sea of controversy with Gruden. And they, they could have beat the Bengals. Well, the Bengals were cardiac in the whole playoffs. They were like one play away from losing everything, and they kept making it. So, I agree. Are the Raiders, are the Raiders going to do it again, though? Like, we can't forget, like, this is the Raiders. They suck. That's <laughs> true. Totally. But I'm going to read you off the AFC team from last year before we go to the NFC. Number one was Tennessee. They're out in our thing. Yeah. Number two yeah, was Kansas. 
Number three was Buffalo. Number four was Cincinnati. The fit, the first wild card was the Raiders, then the Patriots, then the Steelers. So in, your, in our one that we have right now, Steelers, Patriots, Raiders, those three are out, and then the Titans are out, and then you have the new teams in. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, every year, like, you know, half, half the teams that made the playoffs don't make it again. Yes, I agree. That's facts. And this is obviously, I hate when they have to put this caveat on, but I guess we have to because we've been doing this for two years. This is if no one gets hurt, yada, yada, no quarterback goes down for the year because obviously we are allowed to change our stuff if a quarterback goes down. Fuck it. I'm going to change my shit in two weeks if I think these teams <laughs> suck. Fuck that. <laughs> I, I just think. Ah, man. I The AFC. I need to see those tiebreakers are going to be crazy because I, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if two teams from the AFC North are getting in. That West is, I, I got to see these tiebreakers, man. I think, I think they will. I mean, you got to remember, they're all going to be beating up on each other. Like, I don't think any team in the AFC West is going to sweep the, sweep the other team. So that's already, that's already three losses for each team in the AFC um, West. If one of them does, whoever's the quarterback is going to win MVP that year, this year. <laughs> That's an easy one. Oh, he swept the, the hardest conference in the league, the hardest division. So, yep, you already got the headline going. Oh yeah, but this is this is the harder part because the AFC, it's significantly harder. You go to the NFC, I, I, I don't. It's kind of weak. It is weak. Let's just be honest. And let's start off with the most famous division in the NFC, the NFC East. Justin, who you got? Man, my 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 brothers in arms in Dallas and um Chuck are gonna be pissed off because um I got the Eagles winning the division. I'm sorry. Ugh. It it pains me. I hate them, but I think the Eagles are gonna win. Jalen Jalen Hurts, another year, another year of development. Eagles got a top five and lie in the league. They picked up A.J. Brown in a trade, got Devontae Smith, Dallas Goller at tight end. The defense is good. Their schedule is a lot easier than the Cowboys. Like, I think the Eagles are going to take this division. I have no disagreement Hurt there. Heart. They made all the, <laughs> they had all the. I mean, the reason that I was teasing that the Cowboys, I don't think Dallas, I don't think Dallas is making the playoffs. I really don't. I don't see it. I don't. Yeah. I don't know about all that. No. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't. I don't. Make, where are they going to make it at? The fucking wild card. What are you talking about? Okay, so we're going to. We can already do I this. Mean, we're, right about to, we're about to talk about them next. So, like. Go ahead, because I, I don't think they I don't think they make it. I really don't. I can give you wild card games right now. There's only three wild card spots, and I don't think they're better than any of the three teams I'm about to name. First, I got to see. Three, they, name three teams. They're not better than the Saints. I don't know about that shit. Their defense is not better than the Saints. Their weapons are not better than the Saints. It all comes down to Jameis Winston. Okay, go on. I don't want to say one of them because I feel like this is the... I'm going to leave that out for you for shock value. But two teams from the NFC North are going to get in the playoffs. That's and both of them are better than the Cowboys, and I think two teams from the NFC um West are going to get in the playoffs, and they're both better than the Cowboys. Hell, they might get three. First of all, you do not like the Cardinals that much. Shut up. <laughs> I don't, but they've made the playoffs every year. I have to respect it. Second place in the NFC East, I got the Cowboys. See now the he fucking has to schedule. Think. Now he's going to have to think about it. The fucking schedule is tough. I'm not going to lie. If we can survive the fucking um, first 11 weeks of the season, it gets a lot easier. So okay. right. we're, we're missing fucking Ty Tyron Smith for pretty much all the year. So that's that's not going to help us. Like we are significantly, significantly shittier when he's not playing. But yeah, if we get through the first two weeks against Tampa and, and Cincy, Washington and um the Giants week three and four. 
Then the, at the Rams, ugh, that's going to be tough. At the Eagles, we that's going to be tough. Then we got Detroit, Chicago, Green Bay, Minnesota. If we get through those 11 games, like 500, and then just sweep the back end, I think we'll make the playoffs. Oh, we'll, we'll see once we keep going down these things. All right. The, la- the, last, the last five games after the Vikings, w- week 11, are the Giants, That's the one. Colts, the Texans, That's one. The, J- the Jaguars, the Eagles again at Tennessee, and then at Washington. So like we'll, we'll, we'll go like once we once we I'll put them on the other side once we you finally give your things I'm telling you they're not now let's go to the AFC North there's a reason I was quiet Justin go NFC ahead North NFC North I'm sorry now the NFC North y'all about to be y'all y'all about to think I'm smoking crack I got the Minnesota Vikings winning that division they are the NFC hot pickup like the Chargers. Yes, I got them winning. I think they they just hired Kevin O'Connell, the OC from the Rams, and I think that's just going to be huge for Kirk Cousins. I mean, you've seen what like these systems have done to these quarterbacks. We got Joe Burrow, we got we got Jimmy Garoppolo. Shit, we have Baker fucking Mayfield. He's Kevin Stefanski comes for that Shanahan tree too. We have Baker fucking Mayfield. The Vikings still have um, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen. I think. Um, Kevin O'Connell is going to make a huge impact on Justin Jefferson as well. I think we can potentially do some similar things to what Cooper Cup did last year. I really like, I really like the Vikings. And then Green Bay lost some offensive. Uh, they lost Monte Adams, who was pretty much the only dude they threw to last year. And, and Scantley. Yeah, and um, MBS. So I think that the Vikings are definitely going to take this division. They, they have an easier schedule than Green Bay. They don't have to play the 49ers like the Packers have to do. Like, yeah, I think actually the Packers don't have to play the 49ers this year, but they don't have to play. Um, they don't have to play the Rams. They don't have to play. Um, well, they're good teams for the Packers. I play. They don't. Yeah, that's the only ones I can think of right now. But yeah, I I think the Vikings are going to bounce back. The Vikings were. They were pretty good last year. I mean, most of the games they lost were close. So, like, that's just one of those teams that are just going to bounce back from last year. You go to the NFC South. You have, whoa, go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I was like, that's why I was like testing when you're saying the teams that are better than the Cowboys. I picked the Saints to win the division. Whoa. I'm high on. I'm high on the Saints, man. I've Jameis come Jameis coming back. A healthy quarterback. We got Michael Thomas coming back. They have Jarvis Landry. They drafted the kid, Chris Olave out of Ohio State. To, um take the top all the defense. They got one of the best defenses in the league. Dennis Allen's their head coach, who's been the defensive coordinator for a few years. They're losing Sean Payton, but they still have OC Pete Carmichael, who's been there since 2009. So, like, it's going to be a little adjustment with the play calling since um, Sean Payton did do that. But, yeah, I, I like the um, Saints in the division. I really do. I wouldn't be too surprised. One, I was surprised you picked them because I didn't even go down that far. And <laughs> I would say they've won the di- they won the division, obviously, the year the Bucs won the Super Bowl. And they just – let's just call it what it is. Anytime the Saints play the Bucs, they whoop the Bucs' ass. They – they be whooping their ass in the regular season. They they met once in the Tom Brady era, and um, they won because Drew Brees was shot at that point. Like mm-hmm. I remember that game. Drew Brees was shot at that point. Mm-hmm. And like, let's let's just get into Tampa. I'm, the reason why I'm picking them not to win the division is interior offensive line is um a it's question terrible. mark. They uh, the their their starting center got um hurt he's on ir right now so he won't be back till at least like week eight their other um guard can't remember his name but the Bengals um ended up signing him so they, they got that they got those issues chris godwin's hurt hurt and won't be back and won't be back for the um first couple of games so i i just think the patriots gonna fall back tom brady the box tom he brady said was, the patriots oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pa- I mean, the Patriots ain't making shit, so. No, they're not. Yeah, man, Tom Brady was retired earlier this year. Like, he was ready to be done. So I think I think that 
we're I'm I'm not gonna say that actually. I was about to say that we're finally gonna see him fall off the cliff, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Like, but I don't, I don't think his heart is as in it as it has been. Okay, all right. Put those people on the side. Uh, before we do playoffs, we got the NFC West, and you wanted to talk this through. Yeah, because I don't I, I don't know I don't know who I mean. It's between two teams. It's between it's between the Rams and it's between the 49ers. I mean, the easy pick would just be, you know, pick the Rams. I mean, they are the Super Bowl champs, but like I think they're gonna fall back a little bit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like they they can't they don't like they struggle. Like they struggle against the 49ers, and the 49ers still pretty much have everyone. So I really don't know. I want to go the 49ers so bad, but the question mark with them is I don't know how good um Trey Lance is about to be. So I I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Like that's why I ain't putting no notes for real. We just had to like, you know, I need another opinion. I need to you know talk up with my guy. Like I, uh, I don't so, know. So we haven't seen Trey Lance really play like a meaningful game. So that's gonna be a big not as a starter. Not as a starter. They are they signed Jimmy Garoppolo, which was crazy. They signed him to a one year deal. So they have a really good insurance policy. And people forget, man, this team was dead in the water. And then they just started, like, Kittle got hurt, all that stuff. And they started winning. They are one dropped pick away from going to the Super Bowl. I I mean, I I think, aside from Bill Belichick, I think Kyle Shanahan, like, is the best coach, football coach, I think I've ever seen, like, not accolades or not like none of that. Just like the schemes that he does, like the shit that he can like put together if he has like the right people for his system. Like the dude's incredible. Like he really is. Like I, I just respect him so much. So like I can't just, you know, go picking the Rams. I mean, I know they got the boy running Sean McVay. I know I, I was giving Sean McVay shit last year. I told him I told that man he had to win the Super Bowl. Yes, we did. And he did. Yes, we did. <laughs> he did. We said if they didn't win the Super Bowl, everyone had to go. Yeah, we did. We said full blow up, and they won the Super Bowl. And yeah. I'm just at a loss, man. Like I'm, I'm looking at the schedule. Like I'm looking at the 49ers schedule right now. It's it's easier than the Rams schedule, but I just don't know. I think I'm on. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the Rams here, but only we'll see. the only pushback to the Shanahan thing because you said if coaches outside of um Belichick. I will say, because we talked about him earlier, I've never seen an NFL coach get more with less like Mike Tomlin does. Yeah. Yeah. And I said I that agree with Shanahan, sure. but that's my pushback with Yeah, I, I, I was I thought you were about to say Andy Reid, which I cannot like dispute that here because that's a that's a damn good coach too. He used to He's a very good coach. He used to be a thorn in my side as a child for years coaching the Eagles. So yeah, I'm well familiar with that man. But yeah, I don't know. I really don't know about the the Rams and the 49ers and the um NFC West. The only thing I do know for sure is that the Cardinals won't be in the top two. Well may, maybe top two, but I don't think they're gonna be in contention. That's tough because looking at last year's playoffs, the NFC West at the fourth, fifth, and sixth seeds in the NFC. I don't mean they're going to do it again. That, that doesn't, but all three of those same teams, Rams, Cardinals, San Francisco, I think with the Cardinals obviously not having D-Hop for the first couple games, that's going to be tough because Kyler Murray has shown that without D-Hop, I don't know if he's it. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't have paid him. I wouldn't. I you would not have wouldn't have paid him. So you will you will blow it up then, or yep. well not blow it up, but like get another quarterback. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm, like you can't tell me you're worth all this money, but every time, and it's funny because we've seen it in real time for two years. We've been we we said Kyler Murray should have won MVP when he threw that hail mary to um, D Hop, and then yeah, when the season gets to ago. later, they always crumble every time. Playoffs, they always just lay an egg. Nah, you can't be doing that, and you're going to get paid the X amount. I, I wouldn't be like, look, nah, I couldn't do it. I'm like, all right, well, adios. You go sign with someone else, and you can go have fun on the Texans. Because <laughs> what, what playoff quarterback is he better than, Justin? 
in I, any division. In any division? I'll I'll go through first of all. I, we have I, the I Bills. Think than, I think than. he's better than Tannehill. Well, I'm talking about our playoffs right now because we don't even have them in. Oh, the t- oh the teams I picked. Okay, okay, okay. So he's not better than Josh Allen. He's not better than Lamar no. Jackson. Justin Herbert. No. Hell no. He's not better than Patrick. Russell Wilson. Uh, no. Nope. Uh, Joe Burrow. Nope. So the only one you could say by default because of age and all of that from the NFC, Matt Ryan. Okay. And that's because of age. He's not better than prime Matt Ryan. No. But he's better than the current Matt Ryan. All right. And currently right now, Kyler Murray or, well, Kyler Murray or Jalen Hurts? I would take Kyler. Okay. Kyler Murray or Kirk Cousins? Oh, you know I'm taking Kirk. What you mean? Okay. Kyler Murray or Jameis Winston? I would take Kyler in that one. Okay. And we haven't even, I haven't even named the other ones because we haven't even put our wild cards in, but Kyler Murray or number or the 12s. The 12 in New England and the, I mean, the I did it too. The 12 in Tampa or the 12 in Green Bay? <laughs> we know he's not better than either of them. So we just named a whole bunch of playoff contention teams and he was only better than like three. It's it's just the fact that like you gotta remember what the Cardinals were before him and they were fucking That's trash. True. True. And like when you have a quarterback, you can't just like give up give up on them like that. What do you I mean the they, Cardinals they, did with Josh Rosen? They said adios, I and mean, now that dude can't even get a job. I mean, he actually sucked though. But like <laughs> they didn't have to they didn't have to necessarily pay him early, is what is what you're saying. Yes. You can't you you can't just not not sign just let them walk like oh that, no but no i would not have paid him early no but, but i agree with you like yeah he really hasn't proven that he should be you know in that um in that top class of quarterback i i know all these motherfuckers be making hella money but like i know that's just how the nfl works but at some point we gotta be like judicious about this shit we gotta start looking to seeing what these guys are actually doing and i know like you know, it's not all on the quarterback. Like, you know, QB wins as a stat is, you know, stupid because, like, there's 11 there's, there's eleven or guys on each side of the ball. But, like, Correct. you know, you got to be doing some. You got to be doing some in these moments. And, no, nah, I agree with you. I wouldn't have paid him. I wouldn't pay him early. Shit, if Lamar Jackson didn't get paid early, I mean, mind you, he's fucking negotiating for himself, which is also fucking them up. But Kyler shouldn't have got paid early either. I know. Lamar Jackson, an MVP award, all his – success and then kyler's here gets the playoffs gets stomped gets bounced you're right i i would i wouldn't just let him walk. i just wouldn't have paid him this early because like we already talked about once you pay these qbs early the windows close like if you pay him this big money like once the big contract comes in it's over that's why aaron Rodgers hasn't won shit in 10 years <laughs> he didn't really start making money for real till fucking a few years ago though. that's yeah, the and crazy that's when, thing and that's when it really closed for him you can't sign yeah. no damn help if he's 60% of the damn salary. No, I agree. I agree. So back to the NFC West. So I think safe bet, you got to go Rams, like safe bet. Yeah, yeah, if we're being safe, but yeah. I'm, I'm I, I think the 49ers get in. The, so let's the Rams get in. So we'll say they win the – and that's subject to change in like two weeks. So – Division winners, Eagles, Vikings, Saints, Rams. So that's four spots. We only got three left. So we left out 49ers, Tampa, Green Bay, Cowboys. I'll put the Cardinals down for respect. So out of those five, what are your three? That's what I was saying. (laughs) That's why I think the Cowboys are getting in. Green I Bay won't have the. Play. They're getting it. I'm, I'm, I, I have the Cowboys as the seventh seed. All right. So. By virtue of that week one game, Sunday night football against Tampa, I think we're going to win that game. I'm telling you. Right I am calling it right now. We're winning that game week one. Oh, so you, that's, that's going to be the tiebreaker. And, and that will end up, and that will end up being the tiebreaker, baby. So yeah, oh. I got them. Um, yep. I got the Cowboys. Um, I got the Cowboys in the playoffs, Tampa. Was on the outside looking in, and then um, Green Bay and the 49ers. So you have Tom Brady coming back from his little two-week hiatus retirement, 
to not make the playoffs. Yep, I do. Mm. Okay. So you had Green Bay and then 49ers. So you had the Cowboys as the seventh seed. Who'd you have as the first seed in the NFC? <laughs> the first, the number one seed. Who are my division winners? We got the Eagles. Mm-hmm. We got Vikings. We got the Vikings, Saints, Rams. Mm-hmm. I, I think I now nah, the Rams a bit. The Rams schedule tough though too. I, I think I want to go. Um, I think I want to go the Eagles. Eagles is the one seed by virtue of record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think got- the Eagles gonna be the one seed. The the Rams, the guy I'm at the two seed. Saints, Saints three seed. I got the Vikings at the four seed because you know they'd be fucking around. And then, who do you have five and six between Green Bay and the Forty ers Packers. Well, actually, I don't know. Forty um, Nineers Packers because the Forty ers no, the 49ers don't play the Packers, I don't think. I can pull it up. I, I, I have all the schedules up. Yeah, the 49ers don't play the Packers, so I, I still think the 49ers will be 49ers will do better than the Packers. I'm looking at this schedule. I see some I see some cupcakes on here. So only thing I mean the only thing I disagree with is I'm taking the Cowboys out, and I'm having Tampa in. Cowboys outside look again. McCarthy gets fired at the end of this year. That's what I'm having. I mean, us not making the playoffs isn't necessarily a bad thing if, if Big Mike's out. I ain't going to hold you there. I just I just can't see, like, if you have – no offense to Dak, but if the wild card QBs are Tom Brady, Aaron, and Aaron Rodgers, I mean – and then I respect the 49ers because I think they're going to get in. 49ers might F around and get back to the NFC Championship game again. If Trey Lance pans out. If Trey Lance sucks, then... Oh, shit! The NFC is even more wide open than than it was. Actually, we can't even fucking say that because they got Jimmy G still. That's true. And just look at the NFC from last year. This is the big difference between the NFC and the AFC. Last year, number one seed was the Packers, 13-3. and three. Won, the, won, you know, Aaron Rodgers, another MVP. Number two seed was the Bucks. Three Cowboys. Four Rams. Five Cardinals. San Francisco six. Philadelphia seven. Justin, on your thing, I mean, you have the only difference is you have the Bucks not in and the Cardinals not in. And all those same teams are back in because we forget that Philly snuck into the playoffs. I don't I don't forget that. They were playing great ball at the um Towards the end of the season last year, Saints had a shot. They had a shot even without Jameis. That's what I'm saying. You get just so incompetent back there, and sky's the limit. So, you, all right, Justin, we made the we made the NFC more interesting than I thought it'd be. Yeah, I mean, it's de- it's definitely going to be interesting. Like, it is weak compared to the AFC's quarterbacks and teams, but you know, it's still going it's still going to be intriguing to see how everything shakes out. And you already said you got Bills are playing that first game Thursday. Who's who's winning? I like Buffalo. I like Buffalo. They're a minus two and a half favorite. I'm strongly considered betting on it right now because I got all the shit pulled up right now. I feel like NFL team, I feel like the teams who get their rings on the opening game always get their asses whooped. Yeah, I, I, I think Buffalo's going to win that win that game. I mean, Josh Allen's has something to prove. The Rams are going to be high off that, that Super Bowl win. So, yeah, I think Bills take that game. And then Shout. you have a couple of, like, return games. You got Baker playing against the Browns his first game and Russell Wilson playing against the Seahawks his first game. Man, you cannot make this stuff up unless you're in the NFL. How do you think those little games are going to go? Uh, let's see. Panthers at Browns. I think I would go Cleveland there. I think yeah. Cleveland. I, th- I think Cleveland will go down there and beat them. I do too. I think Cleveland. I think Cleveland will win that game. 
and then the Seahawks are going to be terrible. Yeah, Seahawks are not trying to win this year. Unfortunately, do you know who I think is going to be the worst team in the league? The Falcons? Chicago. Oh, God, I feel so sorry for Justin Fields. I do, too, but they're they're terrible. They're yeah. god-awful terrible. They have nothing, nothing. Yeah. Oh, shit, hope maybe they can get um Smith and Jigman then. Yeah, if they – but it's the NFL, man. It cannot be your quarterback's fault. And in two years, you're out of a job. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at some of these lines. I know I'm so goddamn high on the um Chargers and Raiders right now, but this line, the Raiders getting three. I will honestly take the Raiders to cover that game. Um, hometown, you nervous? I mean, first game with the Bengals is the Steelers. Woo! Yeah, I mean, all right, so this is a trend that like that I've heard from like all the gambling podcasts I um talk to. You 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 want to take in division dogs this week one familiarity. They they know the teams that they're playing. They play them twice. Like those are the type of dogs that you want to go. That's that's pretty profitable. So like teams that fit that criteria. We got we got the pa- we got the Patriots. We got Houston. We got Houston playing um the Colts that week one. We got let's see, I I skipped over a couple Steelers and the Bengals. Look for look at look at the Steelers, Packers, Vikings. So like any of those um any of those in the division dogs are pretty. I ain't gonna say they're safe bets because no bets ever safe, but th- those are those are some some winners typically. You know, fair enough. Man, we are here. Felt good doing an NFL podcast preview and who we're going to win the divisions, who are going to be in the playoffs. Obviously, this, as Stephen A. Smith would say, these lists are very fluid because they will be changing every time we are back on the podcast because teams are going to surprise us. Teams are going to disappoint us. It's the beauty of the NFL. There's only there's only a couple things guaranteed in life, death, taxes, and the Cowboys having the most national televised games in the NFL. Every goddamn week, baby. Every week, Sunday night against the GOAT, Tom Brady. Uh, with that being said, thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. You heard who we're picking. Let us know who you're picking. We're going to be keeping you up to date throughout the season. This was fun. And then we're going to be talking about scores the next time. And it's going to be a ride. So make sure you like, rate, comment, subscribe anywhere you listen to. And, again, let us know who you think is going to make the playoffs. This is the L7C signing out.